Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, how cattlemen can ensure small pests don't create a large hit to their bottom line. Plus, how the beef industry's own MBA program is helping cattlemen connect with consumers. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Topping this week's cattle industry news, immigration reform continues to be a major topic on Capitol Hill. And the National Cattlemen's Beef Association is urging Congress to revisit some of the current U.S. immigration laws. NCBA wants Congress to provide a non-seasonal guest worker program so farmers and ranchers can have access to year-round help from citizens of other countries. NCBA would also like to see additional laws put into place to secure border areas. This would help protect the livelihoods of farmers and ranchers who live and work in those areas while helping protect the health of their livestock as well. NCBA Vice President of Government Affairs Colin Woodall says immigration reform hasn't been talked about since 1986 and it's time to revisit the issue. When we look at the cattle business is twofold for us. One, it's a matter of labor supply. We have to have immigrant label, labor in order to operate not only packing plants, but also the feedlots and a lot of cow-calf operations utilize uh, employer, employees that come in across the border. Uh, we want to make sure that those employees are legal, but we need to make sure that we actually have availability. We're not a seasonal uh, type of industry like you see with fruit and vegetables. We need year-round workers to help us out. And it's also a matter of border security. With so many of our members in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California that are suffering a lot of the uh, vandalism, trespassing, thefts, burglaries, and even the death of one of our members in Arizona, it's a real problem that they are facing. And unfortunately, we don't see Congress spending a lot of time trying to address that, or the administration for that matter. So we want to see an equal effort paid towards border security to make sure that we keep our ranches down there safe. They are growing great beef down there and they should not be at risk of their life every day just because our government fails to act to help them out. Immigration continues to be a hot topic in Washington, D.C. and we recently had the chance to ask a few members of Congress to share their thoughts on this issue. We have more in this week's Cattlemen's Capital Concerns. Well, you know, I've met with uh, the Nebraska cattlemen and we've discussed the immigration issue. I always come back to that we have to secure the border. That is my number one priority. And it's not just an immigration issue. This is a national security issue. We need to know who's coming into this country and what they're bringing with them. So first and foremost, we have to secure the border. I believe in taking uh, incremental steps in dealing with immigration. I don't know if a comprehensive plan is possible. We'll see. There are a number of senators on both sides of the aisle that are working on immigration. And I guess I'm, I'm uh, optimistic right now in a plan that they can put forward. You know, immigration reform scares some people uh, because typically what you talk about when you talk about immigration reform is amnesty, and we, we don't want to see that. We already have a pathway to citizenship, so I think people are have got to come to terms with the fact that we have a a large migrant workforce that has to be dealt with and and to me that's really the heart of the debate is how do we deal with our migrant workforce and um, that's going to be essential going forward to advancing any kind of real immigration reform is taking a look at the impact that 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 migrant workforce particularly in agriculture has across the country well i hope that the stars are aligning uh, for a comprehensive immigration bill it's something that I've been working on since I first came to Congress. I supported uh, President Bush's uh, bipartisan immigration bill um, when it was then called the Kennedy-McCain measure. Uh, I think that uh, both for reasons of merit and as well as the politics, i.e. last November, that there is a new interest, especially by my Republican colleagues, to reach uh, some form of comprehensive immigration reform. I think it's a narrow window. I think that the longer we uh, 
we uh, are unable to reach a, a consensus, a compromise, uh, then it becomes more difficult. It's another one of those hot topics out there across America, but it needs to be dealt with. Uh, and I think, you know, number one, and, and I live in a state that has a 605 mile uh, border with Canada. And it starts with ensuring that we secure the borders. Clearly, uh, if you're going to uh, stop, before you start cleaning up the spill on the floor, you've got to stop the leaking roof. And we've got to address and improve the security of our borders. Um, I think second, we need to enforce the existing laws. Uh, you look at the 11 million uh, illegals that are here today, about half uh, came across illegally. The other half have overstayed their visas. And so in, in both cases, they're not uh, complying with the law. So we've got to come back to these basic principles, secure the border, enforce the current laws, and then use that as a backdrop to look at the reforms needed here to address the fact that uh, we, we've got to deal with this immigration issue that I think Congress has kind of turned its head away from that. We've got to face the reality of this problem here and put some meaningful constructive reforms on the table. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association works hard every day on tough issues just like this one. Become an NCBA member right now by calling 1-866-USA-BEEF or you can send us an email at c 2 c at beef.org. And don't forget, if you join right now, you'll get a 100 milliliter bottle of Dectamax injectable from Zoetis. And if you join NCBA as well as your state association, you'll get a 200 milliliter bottle. Again, the number to call is 1-866-USA-BEEF or you can email us at c 2 c at beef.org. As cattlemen, we're continually looking for ways to improve our business as well as the quality of the animals that we produce. And whether it's hay season or calving season, we can all use a little bit of expert advice to keep our operations running smoothly. Here in the studio to give us a few management tips for this spring is Dr. John Patterson. He's the Executive Director of Producer Education for NCBA. And Dr. Patterson, thanks for joining us again. You're welcome. Well, we're coming up on breeding season. And why do you suggest ranchers consider doing a breeding soundness exam? Well, Kevin, the biggest issue is the value of these calves in the fall. We cannot take the chance that these bulls are not fertile because these calves are going to be worth somewhere between $1.50, maybe as much as $2 mm -hmm. this fall. So we've got to really pay attention to these bulls on, in their fertility. And what all is uh, entailed in a typical breeding soundness exam? Well, we call it the BSC, and we'll bring a veterinarian onto the place, and he'll do three things uh, in his evaluation. The first one is he wants to do a structural evaluation. How do the bull's feet, his eyes, his teeth, can he move correctly? And so once that bull passes that first stage, he'll go to the second stage and he wants to evaluate the reproductive organ. He'll do a palpation. Are, is the testicle okay? Uh, one of the concerns we always have this time of year is did that bull suffer some frostbite? Sure. So that vet will take a look at that. And then if he passes that stage, then they'll go ahead and evaluate the semen. They want to look at morphology, mortality, and, and just absolutely does he have enough semen uh, to be able to breed a, a cow correctly. And what else would you suggest people consider while they're doing that breeding soundness exam? Well, one of the things we'd like to do in educational programs is draw attention to this problem of trichomoniasis, trick as, as mm. we call it in the industry. It's caused by a protozoan and it causes that cow to abort her calf. And so uh, while that veterinarian is doing the breeding soundness exam, asking, would you also do a trick evaluation? It's a pretty good procedure, not hard to do. Uh, it's not 100%, but it's a lot better today than it was 15 years ago. So let's make sure that one, the bull passes these breeding soundness exam, and second, let's make sure it uh, passes these trick. What we're really asking is, let's pay attention to biosecurity on our, on our farms and ranches that, mm -hmm. that we don't have problems coming onto our place. And, and we do that by our partnership with our local veterinarian. Well, there's no doubt about it. We don't want any open cows this fall, and this is the first step to ensuring that doesn't happen. You bet. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. For more management tips, just visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I think quality has been in our heritage forever. A behind the scenes tour of the New Holland production facility. Plus, how cattlemen can safely prepare their herds for fly season. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD TV.
Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Bend Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer, one that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged build using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a two by four rectangle tube frame. There's a one inch gap between the side and floor, so there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Bend Trailers are loaded with standard features, a lever action hitch, a three foot escape gate and a middle sorting gate, rhino lining along the front edges and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute, or other equipment. Tough and practical, that's Big Ben Trailers, designed and built by a working cattleman. You can rely on and trust Big Ben Trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBenTrailers.com. Big Ben Trailers, built cattlemen tough. Respiratory disease is a significant animal health issue in the beef industry. It costs producers nearly a billion dollars in lost profits each year, and it's the most prevalent disease in calves older than 30 days. So why not prevent respiratory disease before it steals from your bottom line? Vista Once protects your calves with the most complete respiratory disease coverage available, and Vision Blackleg vaccines can add 14 pounds per calf at weaning. For further information, contact your local veterinarian or animal health supplier. Welcome back. Spring is always an exciting time as temperatures begin to warm and the grass begins to green. Unfortunately, this also means we're getting close to the start of fly season for many producers around the country. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck tells us it's not too early to start thinking about fly control and the various options you have to help battle these pests. Kevin Fussell's family has a long history of raising cattle in Central Florida. Their cow-calf and yearling operation has been in business at the same location for more than 140 years. I'm the fifth generation here in Polk City. Uh, well, they came here from Georgia in 18, about 1870 and been right here in this area ever since. The care they give their cattle is one of the main reasons the Fussell family has been successful. That includes making sure the animals are protected from pests like flies. Cattle can bunch together and expend considerable energy while fighting flies. And while they're trying to get relief, they're not grazing normally. Flies are bad here in Florida. I'm sure as they are in all the southeast and across the nation. Uh, you know, a calf, he can't grow good. A cow can't stay in good shape if they're fighting flies all year long. I mean, it's common sense. If they ain't gaining weight, you ain't making money. You know what I mean? We sell them by the pound, and uh, we got to get the best and biggest calf we can. I mean, if, if we're not taking the best care, our bottom line's going to show it, you know. And Research shows flies cost the cattle industry more than $1.6 billion a year due to slowed weight gain and diseases such as pink eye. The two species of flies that cause the biggest decreases in beef production and require the most effort to control are the horn fly and face fly. Ranchers call horn flies the worry fly. You see cattle pawing dirt, flipping it up on their backs, seeking shade, laying down, doing those kinds of things, which means they aren't out grazing. They're an economic drain on, on uh, an operation. We've known since the 80s that horn flies would cause about 12 to 15 pounds reduction in average gain of stalker animals or of calves nursing cows that are infested with flies. Face flies are a little bit different fly than horn flies. They're always on the animal and suck blood. Face flies are related to a house fly and they have a different mouth part. That mouth part, they pick up mucus. So around the corners of the eyes, they want to pick up mucus. And, and uh, when they do that and move from animal to animal, if one animal is infected with, with the right bacteria, then they can mechanically take that to the next animal. So they're important in the transmission of, of pink eye. They don't cause pink eye. You've got to have that bacteria present in the herd before they can transmit it. But they certainly will transmit it. 
Fortunately, producers have options when it comes to battling flies. Ear tags are one of the most convenient methods for fly control and provide several months of effective treatment. Ear tags are easy to install and remove, and animals only need to be handled one time to apply the tags. There's a multiple options out there. The one I like best is insecticide tags, and I like that best because uh, you can put them in at processing and basically go through the fly season with good fly control. So it just kind of falls in the time that we're working our calves too, you know, so it's, it's, it's uh, kind of get two birds with one stone that way, you know. When you look at the fact that you can put that tag in in May and it'll carry through to five months and we can cut those tags out when we wean the calves in the fall. So therefore it's, uh, it seems worth the, the cost per head just in order to not have to keep pinning your cows just to use those, uh, those fly tags one time and kind of get that control through the fly season. Bear Animal Health offers a number of ear tags that producers can use to help control flies. Corathon contains an organophosphate and is the largest selling insecticide cattle ear tag in the marketplace. There's also Silence Ultra Insecticide Cattle Ear Tag, a fifth generation pyrethroid tag that is synergized. Our Corathon tag, uh, it's an extremely good tag. Uh, I've been in practice coming up on 35 years here and uh, have seen a lot of ear tags come and go and that Corathon tag is one of the one of the premier ones or one of the best ones on the market uh, and does a very good job. It controls face flies as well as horn flies and uh, is an organophosphate so you don't have the pyrethroid resistant horn flies affected by it as much as uh, the pyrethroid tags might be. So Corathon is the, is the organophosphate ear tag. The pyrethroid ear tag that Bayer has is Silence Ultra. And that one has beta cyfluthrin, and it also has the PBO in it, the piperineal butoxide. Both the Corathon and the Silence Ultra ear tags are, are releasing product for five months out there. Effective control, depending on the area of the U.S., is going to be four to five months of fly control by applying these tags, which means that you don't have to handle those animals very much. We've had better results with these uh, tags than with anything we've ever used in the past, you know. Uh, I imagine these tags is the best thing since the dipping vats down here in Florida, you know. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, been, it's the most effective control we've had in, in, in years. We'll have more from Central Florida when we return. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I'm an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because I think uh, as an advocacy group, NCBA has done some great things for our industry and I kind of feel compelled to, to give back some of what they've done for us. Because this organization is looking out for cattle producers. They understand what makes our cow-calf business profitable. Join me today. Join me today. Join NCBA today. Head to BeefUSA.org or call 866-USA-BEEF. No storm is too powerful for New Purina wind and rain storm minerals formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breed back rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. When it comes to versatility on your operation, nothing beats a John Deere D-Series skid steer. They're not only great for cleaning and feed chores, but with John Deere Worksite Pro attachments, you can tackle just about any job thrown your way. You asked for versatility, and John Deere delivered. These rock-solid machines are built to last. See your dealer today.
Welcome back. Let's return to reporter Matt Fleck, who's learning about fly control and the options available to cattlemen to successfully control these pests. Poron insecticides are another option for fly control. These products are applied directly, which assures that every animal is treated. Bayer offers Silence Poron insecticide for control of horn flies, face flies, and lice. Silence is good because we can uh, run the cow down the short, short and depart and shoot and uh, never have to stop them. You know, they just squirt them when they come by. and It's a lot less stress and a lot less labor intensive, you know. It's uh, very easy to use. A combination of ear tags and porons works very well. In the ideal program, we'd wait to put the ear tags in until we had flies on an animal. So to get them an even start, and since we've already got to have them in the chute to install the ear tags, we would uh, go ahead and put a poron on them to knock those off then uh, the ear tag can take over and get a start from zero um, as the, the basis for, for their ear tag season. Tags and porons are just a couple of the options producers might consider when looking to control flies. There are also self-application devices like back rubs or dust bags, as well as oral larvicides like Raybon. No matter what method you use, it's important to remember that flies tend to become resistant to an insecticide after several consecutive years. To prevent this, it's recommended that you periodically rotate to a product that uses a different mode of action. Some producers have gone for years using pyrethroids, and that can be detrimental. When you develop pyrethroid resistance in a few flies, it doesn't take long to have it in a lot of flies because you've killed all the susceptible ones. So then a resistant population can occur, and if you rotate to a different active ingredient, one with a different mode of action, then those flies will be killed by that different class of compound. So a rotation program to try to prevent that from happening is a good deal. Whatever fly control choice a rancher makes, Bayer has the right variety of products to make sure these small pests don't create a large hole in a cattle producer's profits. Bayer has a host of insecticide products that we can use, so there's many to select from. We have a couple organophosphates in Raybon, uh, Raybon wettable powder, Raybon oral larvicide. We have uh, uh, cyfluthrin products in our silence that we've had for years. We have permethrin products with and without PBO in them. So uh, a wide range of products. Yeah, we'll keep using them. I say we've had good results and uh, gotta, gotta keep on going. Stay the course, as they say. <laughs> Reporting from Polk City, Florida, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Remember, in a recent study conducted at the University of Nebraska, an 11.8 pound weight gain was demonstrated in cattle where Corathon insecticide ear tags were used to control horn flies. To find out more, visit our website at cattlemen to cattlemen.org. Stay with us. We'll be right back. NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen is your source for industry updates that impact your operation. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association is continuing its fight against the so-called death tax. Hear from congressional members on important issues, learn about the best practices for beef quality assurance, and visit operations from around the country. All in one hour, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern on RFD-TV. To stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, check out BeefUSA.org. You'll find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. Plus, link to NCBA programs like the blog, Beltway Beef, updates on the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show, and the latest from NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Connect today at BeefUSA.org.
Welcome back. More than ever before, consumers want to know where their beef comes from and how it's raised. And that means as cattlemen, we have a responsibility to provide our customers with accurate information to help answer their questions and address their concerns. One program is equipping producers across the country to engage consumers in positive conversations about beef production. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter has the story. The recent Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show brought together thousands of cattlemen from across the country. But one group in particular came to learn more about how to engage with consumers about beef production. Consumers have a lot of questions about their food and beef in particular is one that gets a lot of questions about how it's raised. And when they go on the internet and Google it, which is what everybody's going to do these days, they're going to find a lot of information. They're going to find a lot of misinformation about how beef is raised. An online course called the Masters of Beef Advocacy, or MBA, educates cattlemen on various topics ranging from beef safety to environmental stewardship and guides them on how to talk comfortably with consumers. Really what we're asking is for you to invest in, in getting out and engaging consumers once you've been through the program. So it's really a lifelong investment in the future of the beef industry in the United States. The MBA program has more than 4,000 graduates ranging in age from 11 to 80. And no matter how much they know or don't know about the beef industry, there's something for everyone to learn. I always get into discussions and I find myself um, not 100% of what I might be saying. I took this class and got a lot of valuable information and now I'm like 100% confident in my numbers and what I'm saying. I really enjoyed the nutrition section. Um, because although I manage a feed yard and so you know I know about environmental issues and I'm really concerned with animal welfare and I've been a BQA advocate for years and I knew about all of that stuff. Um, the, the nutrition aspect of beef and, and knowing that it's full of zip and you know convincing my kids that zinc iron and protein were very important and, and you know all of those things were things that I didn't know. Ann Burkholder, manager of Will Feed Incorporated in Cozad, Nebraska, was one of the first graduates of the MBA program and was also this year's guest speaker. I think that it's really interesting to, to begin consumer outreach and to start talking to consumers. And one of the things that I've learned is having to, to understand and explain how you raise your animals, how you care for your animals, actually makes you a better caregiver. The MBA program is designed to help cattle men and women reach out to a broader audience in order to effectively tell the real story of modern beef production. I think the MBA program plays a key role in bringing us together, giving us all some basic education, and then motivating us to go out and, and try to reach out to those folks that are interested in where the food comes from. I really truly believe that our ability to raise our own food, our own beef here in the United States depends on us being able to get out there and adequately answer questions that consumers have about beef. We need farmers and ranchers to be there to ask, answer those questions. Reporting from Tampa, Florida, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Joining me in the studio to talk more about the Masters of Beef Advocacy program is Darren Williams. He's the Dean of Students and Executive Director of Communications for NCBA. Darren, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Kevin. Well, why don't you start with some background. Why was the MBA program created in the first place? Well, about four years ago, with the advent of social media, Facebook was really taking over, Twitter was really in its infancy. We saw a need to have a, a grassroots network of producers farmers and ranchers across the country who could engage in social media conversations with consumers but also be on the ground in their own communities to answer questions about how beef is raised today and uh, questions that consumers have like impact on the environment, uh, beef safety, whether animals are cared for properly, uh, is beef healthy for me and, and safe and, and so we wanted to equip producers with, with the tools to answer those questions. And why is it so important from a consumer perspective that producers engage with them in these conversations? Well, you know, today's consumer really has a lot of questions about where their food comes from, mm -hmm. uh, partic particularly millennials, uh, mm -hmm. those younger consumers. They want to engage with the people and feel like they have a relationship with the people they are buying food from. Mm -hmm. Food's a very personal thing. You know, we, we all eat every day, but it's a very personal thing. And, and so they want that connection. And so fortunately, we were out there. The Beef Checkoff had the foresight 
and, and the producer leaders and the committees that put together the MBA program had the foresight to see this need and be out there in front of this whole advocacy movement with mm -hmm. the, the Masters of Beef Advocacy Program. Yeah, you guys were really leaders. So tell us a little bit about what the program all consists of. Well, there's six online courses. You go through them on your own computer, on your own time. Mm -hmm. uh, each course, there's a little uh, pre-recorded tutor tutorial, as you well know, the I voice do. of the Masters of Beef <laughs> Advocacy right. Program. That's right. And uh, they go through that tutorial, and then there's a series of, of quiz questions, and you complete the course and go on to the next one. Yeah. It's your own time. We've had people doing doing it uh, out in the barn during the middle of calving season. So. That's great. That's a great, uh, great way to, to uh, improve your own knowledge and expertise, but more importantly, to learn how to put that in, in forms and fashions that consumers want and need to hear. So, so one last question for you, Darren. As it relates to students, who makes the ideal student for this MBA program? Well, I'd say anybody who's passionate about beef and, and is involved in, in beef production. Uh, farmers and ranchers, certainly, that, that was really our target for the course, and we've, we've had a, quite a few of those. We've got a lot of college students in mm -hmm. animal science programs, beef production classes that go through the program. Um, retailers, food service operators, mm -hmm. so, you know, if you're involved in getting beef from the pasture all the way to the consumer, the Masters of Beef Advocacy Program, I think, would be a great tool for you to engage consumers in conversations. It really is an outstanding program, so thank you for all you're doing. Well, thank you, Kevin. If you're interested in earning your MBA, you can sign up for the course right now, and it's completely free. Just log on to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Join producers from around the country at the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee. It's an event that, that we will never miss. I love seeing the enthusiasm. I think it's great. It's perfect combination and the perfect time to hold the NCBA convention. Join your fellow cattlemen for the latest cattle industry news, education, networking, and fun. Plus, at the NCBA Trade Show, get the latest in industry technology for the cattle business. This trade show is one of the best trade shows that is out there. It's amazing the amount of industry and businesses that come here to be a part in. And there's no other place that for those of us as beef producers can go to have this much information in one place. So follow me to Tennessee for the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, February 4th through the 7th. Learn more at beefusa.org. At Merck Animal Health, we are dedicated to improving the health and well-being of animals through innovative science-based solutions, products, treatments, and services to ensure a dependable, affordable food supply. From cattleman to consumer, from farm to family, we're with you every step of the way. We work where you work. What drives you drives us. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Welcome back. Maybe you own one, a shiny piece of New Holland equipment. It could be a tractor or maybe a round baler. Ever wonder how it was made? Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter recently had the chance to head to Pennsylvania to get a behind the scenes tour of the products made right here in America. Let's take a look. In eastern Pennsylvania, Lancaster County to be exact, you'll find the small town of New Holland. This is where more than 600 employees focus on creating the reliable, quality pieces of New Holland farm equipment you'll find all across these 50 states. I think quality has been in our heritage forever as a company. We're over 100 years old, but when you look at quality in New Holland, you talk about uh, the, the reliability that the farmer expects from the New Holland brand and the fact that we want to keep him as a customer, him or her as a customer, and keep them coming back. So it's important for us that they get a quality bell or, or crop uh, prep unit and that they come back to us. So it's important to them to, to have their uptime and be able to uh, make money on their farm, so it's important to us to supply that to them. From the factory to your farm, no matter where the equipment is going, it begins to come to life in what New Holland calls a virtual reality room. That's where a team of engineers and designers brings their ideas together to create the equipment that ends up in the field. 
It's also where they refine their ideas down to the details before anything hits the assembly line. Simulation helps with products because we only have a limited amount of time to get our products out to the market. What simulation does is we take, say, a physical test, you know, baling hay, okay, and we go out to the field and we'll record some of the information, some of the aspects of that process, and then we'll bring that information back and use computer technology to apply that same process to a virtual model. And then we use that scenario and we do iterations on it. The love of all things ag is what brings many of these employees to New Holland. Many members of the New Holland team grew up on farms and ranches and find those experiences are important to their design success. I grew up on a farm. I've always enjoyed you know, agriculture. Uh, had a knack for taking things apart that put me into engineering and now the job that I do is simulation really has a lot of variety because supporting all the design teams I work on all the products we, we design here in New Holland. It is very fulfilling to be able to go out and operate the equipment uh, that uh, you help to develop and uh, also it, it's very fulfilling to see the issues and, and things that my family and my brothers and my uncles that run equipment come and say you know, we really like to see this fixed or we don't like how this works and to be able to accomplish something here uh, at this end in the design to actually address some of those issues and, uh, and make those changes. And that's the type of quality and attention to detail you'll find in New Holland products throughout the entire production process. Next, we'll take an inside look at the New Holland plant as a round baler comes to life. It's pretty impressive stuff. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I am an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because our nation's capital is a long way from home and my cattle operation. I pay my dues to keep a staff here in D.C. working on behalf of the industry and working on my behalf every day on all the issues. The NCBA doesn't pick and choose what issues it works on. It works on every issue, every day, on behalf of all the cattlemen across the country. NCBA membership is important because there are policy makers and regulatory agencies making decisions that affect your operation every day. Join me and thousands of other cattlemen across the country. We are better together than we are alone. Your support is needed. We are NCBA membership. Join, Join us today. today. Join NCBA today. Head to BeefUSA.org or call 866-USA-BEEF. forage and improve grazing access by clearing out weeds and brush with these Dow AgroSciences herbicides. See your Dow AgroSciences representative or visit rangeandpasture.com. I'm Kevin Oxter, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Check us out at cattleman to cattleman.org or on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. As farmers and ranchers, I think we're all pretty curious about how things get made. Let's return to reporter Brian Baxter in New Holland, Pennsylvania, where he got a tour of the New Holland Hay Tools factory from a New Holland employee that's been with the company more than 40 years. It doesn't take long to turn this into this at New Holland's factory. Bruce fister has been with the company more than 30 years and he's proud to show us how a round baler goes from sheet metal to your farm. We're starting the tour out in our machine shop. Uh, we have a full service machine shop. Uh, we have 38 CNC machines and a blend of conventional equipment. Uh, the processes that we have here allow us to build any component uh, machine part that engineering can design. As we pass here, uh, our company, uh, has a program called world-class manufacturing. Uh, it's a lean manufacturing technique that we're implementing here in the plant uh, that allows us to improve the uh, pro uh, pro quality of our product uh, and to reduce our operational costs. Uh, this is a Motoman robotic spot welder. 
It does the shielding for all of our round balers. Uh, what happens here is that the operator will load the component parts into three separate stations and the uh, robot moves from station to station. Uh, this is the goal wing door to a uh, round baler and uh, I like to point this out because it, uh, it allows people to understand the full manufacturing process. Uh, we'll see the door here as it comes off the spot welder. Uh, the component parts were off of the laser and then a press brake. From here the parts go to our powder coat system and then are delivered to the finishing line where they're installed on the last station of the line. Uh, the Roll Belt Round Baler is our highest volume product in the New Holland plant. Uh, as such, we've invested a lot of time and effort in robotic welding. Uh, a typical round baler has 280 feet of weld in a finished unit. Uh, because of that uh, large amount of weld, we have 17 robotic welders in the round baler process. And in 2006, we celebrated the build of our 200,000th round baler. Uh, this is the beginning of the uh, round baler uh, mainframe uh, welding. Uh, here with a uh, Motoman two-station robotic welder. Uh, we're welding up the side sheets uh, that will go into the mainframe. Uh, from here, the side sheets are uh, taken out and uh, married together to become the mainframe for a round baler. Uh, this is the roll belt round baler assembly line. Uh, the mainframe that you saw previously is moved into the line, and we assemble a round baler in six stations. Starting from bare metal, each baler takes shape piece by piece and goes through an extensive two-stage painting process before final assembly begins. In 2007, we installed two new paint systems at a cost of $18.6 million. Uh, the systems added about 40,000 square feet to the plant. Uh, there are actually two complete separate systems. One is a powder coat system that's primarily used for exterior shielding and uh, a two-part urethane liquid system uh, where we paint the base units. Now this is the final assembly for the roll belt round baler. Uh, the units have come here from the uh, liquid coat to urethane system. Uh, a round baler is finished assembled in nine stations. And here what we're doing is installing the tires and the wheels, uh, the belts, uh, lights, electronic, uh, electronics, separately painted component parts, and we also decal the unit here. Uh, this is the last of the nine stations on the round baler finishing line. And this is the uh, gull wing door that we saw back in the press and shear department at the robotic welder. It has gone through laser operation, press break operation, it's gone through powder coat, and is now delivered here to the last station of the line. Uh, from here, the operator uh, will use this TDA buddy manipulator to lift the door up uh, to hang it on the, the hinges of the unit. Finally, each and every New Holland round baler is put through a 100% inspection process, making sure it lives up to the company's rigorous quality standards. And that is what makes New Holland employees like Bruce proud of every product that leaves the line. Reporting from New Holland, Pennsylvania, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Did you know that New Holland tours are open to the public? Kids need to be age 12 or older. But if you're out that way, it's a great way to see how it's made. For more information on New Holland's round balers and their complete line of products, just visit cattlemantocattleman.org. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right. Where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real and feeding my family a home-cooked meal. That's important to me. That's important to me and Planting the garden and watching it grow It's the official monthly publication of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. The National Cattlemen is produced exclusively for NCBA members and includes coverage of the news and events affecting our industry. 
From Capitol Hill to the far side of cattle country, the National Cattlemen provides information NCBA members need. Every issue includes market analysis, feature stories, and practical management tips. Start receiving your copy of The National Cattlemen. Call 866-USA-BEEF or go online to beefusa.org and join today. Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand, but at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never-ending chores, the unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W, trusted. With the advent of third-party verification, cowmen are able to add value to their calves by preconditioning or early weaning or seek specialty markets like all-natural, sugar-free, or do source and age verification for export. Well, that's what IMI does, and it's not as expensive as you might think. Call them. What do you got to lose? IMI Global's Green Ear Tag. It's like having Honest Abe co-sign your note. IMIGlobal.com. Living in town, boys, it's hard. Lord, it's hard. Even the dog don't like the backyard. Spent all my life on the back of a horse. And that's a life I'd be glad to endorse, except I've got a new baby and a kid starting school, and it's tough to pay bills riding colts and packing mules. And so we gave notice and moved into town, but it's, it's just for a while till we get to down to buy us a place to run a few cows. And a horse for the kid, cause she ain't got one now. And a place where my wife can look up at the stars and hear crickets and coyotes, not a chorus of cars. Maybe I'm dreaming. Dreaming's okay. They help an old cowboy to get through the day. And they give my old brain some time to unwind. Knowing tomorrow, it's back to the grind. And I'll pet my old dog before it turn out the lights. He's wishing like me, we was elsewhere tonight. But for the time being, our dreams have to wait. Cause reality comes every morning at eight. He used to break horses. He used to herd sheep. And he worked in a feedlot a while. And he grew up a dream and he'd buy him a ranch and raise horses and cattle in style. But time pulled a fast one, life took a turn. Dreams pulled the wool over his eyes cause it takes more than wishing and working all day to buy you a ranch and survive. So now he sells saddles or vaccine or seed or writes for the Livestock Gazette, doing whatever it takes to stay close to the land that he'll never get. In ag economics or ranch real estate and his hat and his boots and his gloves collecting his check as he goes down the road from the folks that he wishes he was. But he knows he's lucky to just have a job that lets him stay close to his roots. He may never own the ranch of his dream, but at least he can pay for his boots. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter, and we'll be right back. Ever wonder where the beef checkoff dollar goes and what it buys? The Federation of State Beef Councils is made up of the 45 qualified state beef councils that collect the $1 per head beef checkoff. Each council keeps control of 50 cents and sends 50 cents to the Cattlemen's Beef Board for use in national beef checkoff programs. Many states also choose to send a portion of their share to the Federation to expand national and international efforts. As a division of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, the Federation of State Beef Councils works to support an effective state and national partnership, helping to increase beef demand 
through research, promotion, and education. Because producers themselves direct these programs, your beef checkoff dollars are in good hands. Learn more about the Federation of State Beef Councils by visiting beefusa.org. Welcome back. It's time for one of our favorite parts of the show. Let's take a look at this week's Legacy Photos. We'd sure love to see a picture of your farm or ranch, so send one in. Just visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org for the details. Next week on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, tips from the experts on the right pest control program for your operation. Plus, we head to New Mexico for ranch camp. And of course, a new story from Baxter Black and the week's news and market headlines as always. Well, that does it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. We'll see you right back here next week, right here on RFD TV.